Hey, welcome to this, um, it's not really a tutorial series, it's going to be more of a sort of a making of or a sort of a workflow thought process thing, just to, uh, um, if anyone followed along with the, the Rhino modeling um, series, the Z modeler series, um, this is what I ended up with, so, um, you know, it's more or less the same, I just, uh, I just added a couple more details in, just changed a bit of this around, uh, added a few more bits and pieces and um, it's more or less the same as it was from the end but just a little bit of tweaking here and there so basically what I wanted to do when I finished this I was going to just um, render a couple of paths in Keyshot and, and do a paint over in Photoshop but then I thought it would be nice to put them in uh, some sort of environment um, and in the kind of Warhammer tradition um, dioramas are fairly uh, fairly popular so I thought I might put it into a diorama so I found this um, I found this diorama here that I thought would be a great environment to um, to put them in and also be a good uh, you know it'll be a sort of a mixture of hard surface stuff stuff here with the sculpting and here and, um, you know it'll be a very interesting kind of environment piece to create uh, I haven't really done any environment um, sculpting at all really or creation so thought it might be a good uh, project for me to take on myself and um, I just I might as well record, uh, record the process so we've all sorts of interesting things going on here and um, we have this uh, liquid here pouring out of an old sewage pipe and you know I, I was thinking of um, using uh, Phoenix FD plugin and 3D Max to create um, create this liquid here as a mesh and then I can uh, import it into ZBrush and uh, you know, bring it into the scene, and then over in Keyshot, we'll be able to uh, render that out with a um, a liquid shader. Um, so I thought this this was a really nice uh, diorama to to use uh, for this uh, project. So um, basically, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to just take uh, I'm just going to take the body of the tank to use as um. I'm just going to copy it and uh, I'll just paste it in here and then delete that. So now I'll just um, I'm gonna take this into 3D Max as a kind of a scale reference. So um, the scale between Max and ZBrush, as I've mentioned before, is a bit ropey but it goes easy. So um, after a lot of experimenting and messing around, and a lot of people seem to have this trouble, I came up with it. Well, I didn't come up with it, it's, it's already in. Said brush, but it, it kind of just figured it out by by messing around so much that I just kind of stumbled upon it. So basically, um, I'm setting the scale here, the export scale, to anywhere between uh, you know 100 and a thousand. So I'll just set that to 500. Um, and then preferences, gauzy preferences. Just make sure that this. I, I usually make sure this import the sub tool is, is on and you know it's a good habit to clear your cache files every so often so with those things in place and with this as its own tool which is which is important I found anyway um, we can just go see that over to max and because um, because I set the scale up um, I've, I've multi it's 500 multiplier um, if I just come up to tape here and measure it, um, you can see there that it's uh, it's two meters tall, which is perfect. Whereas if I had just brought this in at the default, it would have been so small that um, Max would have had awful trouble working at that tiny scale. Um, so with that in place, um, you can see here this plane here. When I originally exported the tank here, just with the, the default scale, I, I had to scale the tank down. And this is just this diorama. Um, I'll just uh, I'll just zoom in on that. This is just a plane, uh, you know, a 2D plane, a uh, bit of geometry with this um, diorama. I'm just going to use a very rough reference to um, to lay out these paving slabs. So this was actually. Uh, the size, so I scaled the tank down relative to this, and you can only imagine that how small it was. So um, I'm just going to hide this, and 
we'll just take the plane and go from a top view and then I can I can scale that back up again it's going to be scaling it up huge or not huge, it'll be scaling it up to the normal kind of size and I'm just going to hide and you see the tanks underneath so I'll just bring it down below and then back to the top view and nearly there I'll just uh, I'll scale it up a bit more and this is you know this is um, just to get a rough scale it's 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 not to be all and end all like so it, but that's the reason I just brought this tank in so that we have our scale from ZBrush and um, we can create these paving slabs to the right size so we don't have to we don't have any problems then when we go back into ZBrush um, so it's just a good uh, it's it's a good way to go about setting it up before instead of going on ahead and then realizing later on that your scales are all over the place it'll throw you off so I might just maybe come down a bit more and then if I just kind of roughly uh, let's put this tank sort of kind of roughly into place in screen space here and um, kind of you know you can get an idea based on the size of these blocks here pow, pow, pow. <laughs> um, what size it needs to be so um, you know I go with that, so I can just start creating them, um, creating those paving slabs. So I'm just going to start with a box uh, primitive, and um, just set up the basic uh, parameters and square up the uh, segments. Had enough segments, so we square uh, faces, fairly square. And now I'm just selecting all of these edges and I don't want to include in the quad chamfer modifier and just inverting the selection add the quad chamfer modifier add a turbo smooth modifier and then add a noise modifier just to adjust the settings and that's all just to give us basic shape with some, with some variation in, in the shape and the noise modifiers so are the turbo smooth the quad chamfer just added below those modifiers just to um give us the required um, resolution and the quad chamfer modifiers um, so we'll have kind of nice rounded edges when we bring it over to ZBrush we start sculpting with the trim dynamic brush so this is all just a matter of adjusting settings and getting the first one looking the way I want and then just shift drag clone it out just enter our mount so this is all just roughly based on that drawn behind it just very loosely based and now I'm just changing the seed and all the noise modifiers so each one is slightly different that's just a random seed so I'll change the, um, the way the noise parameters are applied so they'll all be different and just uh, shift dragging again offsetting them selecting all them offset uh, shift drag and offset again and just to um, alternate the rows of paving slabs and now just add and delete ones here and there to give us um, the required pattern and then I'm just uh, gonna adjust a few of them and change their you know make them half I'll just slightly change the size that there'll be ones then that'll be um, broken off as well so all this could have been done in, um, in ZBrush but uh, no, it's really quick for me to do it here in 3D Max so I don't really do much in the whole project in 3D Max just this um, and I use this as setting up the initial scale as I mentioned earlier and once I have that set then if I do need to come into Max uh, I know that I don't have to worry about that scale with GoZ so just um, randomizing a couple of them now and um, you know, space them out and um, you know just go around them uh, so they don't all look perfectly spaced yeah so as I say most of this 95% uh, of it's going to be done in ZBrush so with all these uh, paving slabs in place here and you know I've just randomized them all just uh, grab different selections, move them up, move them down, left and right, rotated them either either, scales them down um, that are placeholders like for, we're going to bring these across the ZBrush now and, and, and 
use the slice curve brush and I'm going to slice parts off split them apart um, and have them as all broken kind of sections um, where they've you know where they've crumbled away sort of as the ground has subsided and they've and they've they've just cracked in the middle or whatever where where they've tumbled over the edge or got close to the edge and the likes of the tank here that'll be driving over things like that because it's sort of a battlefield like so they're certainly not going to be pristine landscapes paver so randomness is always a good thing you know and the more of it the better so I'm going to select all these and this could take a couple of minutes so um, I'm going to go Z them across and it's going to take a couple of minutes to populate into that sub tool list so um, I'll be back over in ZBrush uh, when that happens right it took a couple of minutes but um, due to the high number of polys and sub tools involved in the transfer so it took a couple of minutes and it looks like uh, whenever ZBrush is doing something intensive and it looks like it's hanging if the screen goes white and it says wait for the program to respond or close or whatever just wait for it to respond because give it a couple of minutes because these are all fairly intensive uh, operations it's it's doing you know so it came in alright but it didn't really it messed a few things up and uh, it didn't really come in it didn't really come in properly so um, it's no big deal uh, you know we could export the whole lot as an OBJ and import it and it will come in fine or else um, I'm just going to select that one and uh, and so we delete there. Right, I'll just delete out of the sub tool list um, so it's no big problem a couple of them are misaligned here um, so I can just go around and all I'm going to do here is uh, move them into position and um, uh, control shift transpose move a couple of them around duplicate them and just put them back into position rather than going back to 3d max and trying to fix the problem and get them all perfect it's not supposed to be perfect anyway so it's quicker to just do it in zbrush and uh, i'll be back when uh, when that's done right so i fixed them all up um, bar moving them up so all i'm going to do for that is you know just drag them up into position alt click each sub tool i could have just left the transpose line there alt click the next one and just mask that up part and that's uh, that's them all lined up again so that's all i did there was uh and th these ones are part of the same sub tool now because i just uh cloned them from them and uh that's pretty much it the main thing is as you saw from when they were first imported and the tank was uh, still in the sub tool because um, this is just a way of come across as I said so that you get the exact correct scale um, when you come back from max using this import a sub tool and having that active it, it works perfect every time so no more scale headaches as long as you export it first from ZBrush um, at between 100 and 500 depending on, on the scale um, across and max just so that um, it makes it workable it's not tiny um, so that's basically it next what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to cut them all up now using the slice curve well, not all of them but cut some of them up the ones around the edges that might be broken and a couple in the middle and here and there uh, just kind of roughly based on, on that reference I have so uh, I'll show that process next. Right, so we'll show an example now of, uh, you know, creating uh, kind of broken up uh, paving slabs. So for this, we're going to use uh, the slice curve brush. And, um, you know, if you try to, so let's say, for instance, sorry. Right, so next I'm going to show, um, setting up uh, you know creating these cracked pavers so for this we're going to use the slice curve brush and um, you know as an example if you try to just uh, slice this up we'll say um, you know you say you want to slice it like that and uh, maybe a piece off here as well you know you can shift click to isolate that make sure that's the only poly group uh, visible 
and then delete hidden close holes you can see what we get here um, you know it's uh, ZBrush is trying to um, bridge this gap and uh, stitch all these verts and edges across the open border and you know this is fine here because it's just a straight cut and it's easy enough to, for it to work out but here you know it's not able to work it out because it, it's it's quite a complicated uh, calculation so if we just uh, undo that so the kind of the way around this is um uh, we can leave that one as, as flat and then you can cut these up sort of uh, whatever way you like so I'll just uh, put a cut there and maybe cut there so what you want to do first is um is separate these away so for instance we'd hide those two um, delete hidden close holes Just uh, slice that one again, and now we can delete hidden, close holes, and then uh, delete hidden, close holes. So that's sort of a way around that. Um, so that's basically that's basically it. One other thing to um, bear in mind: if I just alt-click this, when these first imported here, see. Um, you know, if, if you just started straight away slicing these up um, from a f from a flat on view here, you know you wouldn't have seen all these different poly groups, so that's going to cause a problem. So you just want to um, auto groups there for us just to put them all in the same group, and uh, you know same for all of them. It's just the way the uh, just the way the groups come in. I think it was the, um, the smoothing groups and max. Maybe we're converted to uh, poly groups. I'm not too sure. Uh, that's that's my guess on it anyway. So uh, you know, you can just keep doing the same um, doing the same thing here. And let's say you know, you can even uh, double click Alt to give you an angle when any of the curve brushes, and just tap it once for a curve, twice for an angle, once for a curve. You know, you could even um, do it like this but if you do it like this it's the same thing you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to break them up into you know think of them as kind of planar um, shapes uh, you can get curves uh, you know fairly simple curves as well because it's you know there's no major angle changes there for it to stitch up <coughs> you know for the likes of this one so we'd have to look at this the same way how can we break this up without that happening what happened earlier on so we could just uh, get rid of that one first and then when we get rid of that one it's going to leave this poly group here so that's no big deal we can just uh, go to the top view and just um, and just slice that off then into its own poly group and delete hidden and then just get rid of that and delete hidden close holes and you can see it's solved that problem you can even come in and use your smooth brush or whatever it's not going to really matter too much because we be dyna mission or uh, z remission all these anyway we're just looking for the shapes the only reason they added all that topology in 3d max was a uh, so the noise modifier um so the noise modifier would have uh, a <coughs> resolution um you know to work with so uh same thing with that's why i added the uh quad chamfer modifier there just to give you know because we're going to be when you have all when i have all these prepared we're going to be using different various brushes like uh, trim dynamic um to, to kind of chip away off the corners here so trim dynamic has difficulty if it's working on a perfectly sharp 90 degree corner so it's going to be working uh, on a kind of a nice curve that we already have here so uh it's a good head start. It's just it's all this. It's just kind of planning ahead a bit for uh, for eventualities down the road. So another useful little uh, technique I wanted to show with the slice curve brush here is um, 
um, using this uh, if I hold down the slice curve activated hold down control shift and hold down the space bar I see this B radius and um, you've other options here um, this actually exists this little space bar thing on a couple of different tools so it's just something to mess around with but this B radius here and um, you can see there we'll use the brush light to establish how much of the surface will be pushed so that's with the clip brushes but this is obviously a variation of clip brushes so in the case of the slice curve um, the size of your brush is going to determine it's going to make um, a dual parallel slice and your brush size is going to determine um, the slice so I'll slice it and you can see here based on the brush size um, it's a parallel cut um, so remember important is before you, you do any of this stuff as soon as you activate the sub tool to start slicing I want to just auto group it and I might make that touch bigger and we'll give it a slice here and then I can just control shift click on that and close holds sorry delete first delete hidden first close holds and now you can see it's just a um, quick way of rather than slicing and then having to move these parts away it's just a handy little way to do it um, and it's also handy to know about this extra little menu alright then I'll be back when I have all that done then. so uh, another quick thing you can do as well is um, we can always just use our clip curve so don't forget auto groups and um, just give me our clip curve and you know depending on the sort of results you want to get you can break them up and slice them up and close holes or um, rather than the clip curve you're better off using the trim curve you know this is gonna this is gonna do pretty much what we've done earlier on here without all the kind of messing around and closing up holes but um the reason I wanted to show that method and the basics of it um is because of the B radius thing here where we can slice through it um completely and you know get different shapes that you mightn't be able to get with a uh, with the trim curve but for just taking off uh for just taking off corners um trim curve is uh or sorry yeah trim curve is the man so I'll just make sure you're on the right side of the shaded line and that's gonna what that's gonna do is as I say pretty much the same as that it's gonna slice um, slice the lee hidden and close holes all in one go so it's the same as what we did but as I say um, you're not going to have the same um, flexibility here you'll only really be able to take off corners or uh, um, curves you know if we try to do that well that didn't work out too bad but you end up with this sort of thing that wasn't too bad so just uh yeah just experiment with the, with the different uh, techniques and uh, the best thing to do is play around with them you know as i say once you understand what these brushes are doing um, you'll get them working a lot better for you they'd be a lot more effective so this is just more the same now um, using the slice curve brush um, break them up and just kind of planning ahead how I want this broken up because um, I want to break this one up into you know, several you know four or five pieces I think so I'll just do what I did earlier on so that we don't get those um, those issues when we try to uh, close holes so just yeah planning out same so you know it's a good idea to um, auto groups every now and again just to clean up your poly groups and the trim curve um, wasn't working for me there it took a couple of um, kept behaving like slice curve I think if you, if you leave B radius on when you try to use trim curve it behaves as like a slice brush rather than the trim brush so it's just a, I think it's just some sort of it's just a little error or bug so more the 
same. One other thing we can do here is that uh, once you've all the kind of main parts broken up and you're happy, all these kind of bits, um, we can just come in here with trim curve. As I said already, I'm just come all the groups. This, you know, I can just go around and just nip little bits and pieces off and ones that are already damaged. So let's say, for instance, this one here. And uh, Control W. We can just. Uh, Maybe take take a bit off like that. And then if you're not happy with the curve, you can come in again and double tap alt and just take bits out of it and that'll leave us with a kind of a like this part here, like a kind of like a, as if a chunk is kind of broken away from it. And you can just continue to go around and chop bits off and you know, even come down at angles. Even turn on the uh, perspective and come down at sort of weird angles just to kind of give uh, a bit of a regularity across the cut, like that. I'm going to be doing a lot of that sort of work um, with the trim brushes and trim dynamic, and I think trim trim smooth or something it's called so yeah that's basically it like um, this is only the start of uh, the damaging kind of process you know um, so just do as much or as little and then you can you can just uh, as I say we can come in then and do a lot of sculpting Change, turn all these into dynameshes and uh, do a nice bit of sculpting on them to kind of damage them up that bit more. And maybe take a bit more out of this one. Maybe just a bit off the corner. Yeah, so um, you get the idea. We'll leave it at that and uh, in the next part we'll. Uh, just dynamesh these and you know I'll show some different uh, sculpting I'm gonna do a bit more work on these and show some uh, different sculpting brushes and sculpting processes for damaging the uh, stone and rock and, and that sort of stuff right I've gone around and um, pretty much just used the clip brush on um, on every single one individually so that's why I kind of kept them all individual here because uh, you know we can just um, choose one solo it out and then just clip and I have to worry about masking any of the other ones off so I'm just clipping them um, you know more or less just trying to clip get a bit of clipping going on every chip off the corner of every one of them um, I didn't do it in here uh, because I would have to just mask them all and hide them and all the rest of it, so I'm just gonna um, do that with the with the sculpting brushes. So um, what we can do next is um, I'm gonna just we still have uh, you know 39, 80, 40 sub tools. So what I'm gonna do is we can just start merging merging them down. So actually, I get rid of that tank. I think that was still there. Delete. So, what we can do is, as I say, merge them down. So, you know, you could just merge. Kind of merge down. I have to put in some new buttons out here on the, uh, on some of UI. I'm trying to remember where I put them. Definitely put merge on it, didn't I? Might have found it again. <laughs> I just have to drag it in there putting it back in there again so just uh, might as well just quickly show 
how to do that yeah, preferences config enable customize and then just um, alt control and just drag whatever button and just snap it into your thing there so that's all I did so yeah I'm gonna just merge down so I'm gonna merge some of these together you know we can merge them into um, say groups maybe f uh, so I'll come down again and merge some of these down and again so what I'm doing basically is just merging these so that the whole lot of them aren't in the one single sub tool which you know the poly count will be huge then um, so I'm just gonna merge them into you know let's say we've uh, five of them now so in that one there for instance is 8000 so um, I'll be able to divide that up a good, a good few times now what I'm gonna do is uh, rather than use Dynamesh I'm just gonna use uh, Zebra Mesher um, to uh, retopologize them and you know these groups where we've done these uh, clips or the trims um, we've automatically have groups created so if you shift click on any of these um, you can keep them open at the same time when they keep closing down um, by default you can just shift click on them to keep more than one open at a time so in preferences um, interface uh, palettes you can just uh, have a look at these settings here so um, just check them out that one there in particular uh, FX 16 one open uh, sub palette so this can be quite handy if your head is being driven nuts but yeah uh, these keep closing down on you yeah okay so what we're doing now the Z remesher and uh, this new f this feature here keep groups is brilliant so before like if you're trying to um, read to apologize hard surface type stuff like this it would kind of go blobby so now you can just do keep groups and we'll just say same and now if you Z remesh you can see that it has maintained those uh, where we had these clips, you see it's perfectly maintained. So let's uh, keep groups with said remesher. So I'm just uh, just on did that there, and I'd actually like to um, double. I'm gonna just said remesh again with double because uh, it was giving a bit of a, a bit of a blobby result there. So that's a better better starting point. And um, I'm just going to do the same now with all the other sub tilts. So that was the bottom one, and I'll just uh, use these same settings. Where is there? Measure double. Keep groups. And you can see here we got it, a ropey, um, a ropey result. So if I undo that there. What I can do here, these are untouched, so I can just come down here to, uh, and we can just do a uh, group by normals. So I'm going to change the threshold there. I'll just change it up to 80 groups by normals, and um, in fact, I'll just use uh, I'll just use Z modeler, and I'll just go to. Poly group. Let's zoom in a bit. Poly group. Uh, poly group a flat island. And hang on a second, just need to come in a bit closer. And this is just a sort of uh, to help out with the Z remission. So obviously, if I had much better groups um, set up on this. Results. So those groups are okay. And let's change some of these. I'll just see what sort of result we get now from that. Um, is that all it is? I'm just going to change. 
change him. Let's change some of these around. It's not red. And this one. And this guy. Yeah, just if you, you know, <laughs> you see that happening anywhere, you can just add in some extra groups really easily here with Seb Modeler. Um, back to geometry, uh, measure cube groups and uh, double. And you can see now that's done a done a better job of maintaining the kind of shapes we wanted. Uh, except for this weird bit here. So as I say, if you spend more time and just group these off. So flat island here, flat island here that's okay and change that <coughs> let's change this again D don't mind about those I'm adding in those extra edge loops it's not going to matter because we're Z we're meshing now I'll do it once more So there, I'm not too, I'm not too concerned about this. The I could spend more time. I'll undo it and, and pause again, and I'm gonna sort all these out properly um, before I continue on. So I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna pause it now that I've shown you what I'll be doing. So just um, a very handy um, feature here: keep groups for a retopologizing kind of hard sort of stuff. So I'll go around and do that, and I'll, I'll be. Well, here we are back, and I've, I've done that to. Uh, the different sub tilts so as you can see we have nice uh, Z remesher sculptable uh, topology so you know we could um, what have we got it's 42,000 so you know jump up a bit and then shoot, you can see uh, we get a nice clean um, clean sculpting and that's still you know it's two million but that's uh that's spread out over all this so um yeah that's just a quick way um quick way of um retopologizing kind of hard surface stuff and maintaining the uh, the sharp angular kind of forms and this is um another st step forward for say brush towards the uh being pushed the I think quite uh, aggressively by Paul Gabri in the direction of um, you know further on its hard surfacing abilities so another shameless plug for a company I have nothing to do with except enjoy their product right so that is the next stage done and as I promised we'll move on to uh, discussing some of the sculpting tools that we'll be using here for you know, damaging some of this rock here, so I'm just going to solo this out here and uh, concentrate on these. So I'll just get the oh, I can So you got a see if can get a clay polish there and see. It's going to do anything. I just want to soften up a little bit, so. Uh, Polish and let me see a weird bit there. Just gonna drop down the sub divs. Basically, the brushes that uh, the main brushes we're going to be using um, are probably use some pinch. So, for instance, you know, to sharpen up that corner there, or sharpen this up, a bit of pinch, and um, trim dynamic if you wanted the main brushes. So, you know, just to rough up, just to rough up these. Uh, 
these perfectly kind of smooth um, bevels on the corners here so the way I look at it and I heard it from another guy well I was watching one of his tutorials there uh, Nate Stevens the environment artist and he just mentioned that you know the way he thinks about it is um, trim dynamic for you know sculpting rock surfaces around trim dynamics good for um for simulating kind of erosion natural sort of uh, erosion from wind and rain and, and that sort of thing and then um, clay tubes or the clay brushes are good for you know kind of damage uh, chipped away kind of damage so I suppose it's 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 actually it's a good way it's a good way of looking at it you know um, so they're the they're kind of ma main two brushes for uh, for that sort of stuff and then we can also with this high polish brush uh, come in here and sharpen some of these things back up and uh, a bit of trim dynamic in the corner and another thing I find um, the high polish brush or the hard polish brush um, quite useful for is uh, if you're quite aggressive with it on a flat surface let me just get to a good angle and turn it down a bit you can kind of oh sorry I'm still on trim dynamic yeah, hard polish if you're quite aggressive with it maybe not that aggressive on a flat surface I'll just turn it down you can get this um, you know you can get a kind of a wavering effect like you might see in, on uh, on paving stones anyway like natural kind of stone um, you can kind of just go at it sort of aggressively here just randomly and then I don't know if you can see it there uh, I'm trying to catch the light you can see it gives that kind of wavering effect um, so we go back maybe to uh, get a bit more clay tubes and dig away so you're just kind of you know looking at references of stones and things like that rocks cliff faces all that sort of stuff and um, the thing about sculpting stones is like you're kind of rocks it's, it's so random that there's no real right or wrong way to do it you know just once you use these few basic brushes which I think the brushes most people seem to use you know you, it's, you can't really go wrong for, for you know to create something that people are don't associate with being <laughs> being a rock or a stone or a rocky surface so yeah they are the main brushes another um say there you can just get the where that's gone a bit kind of smooth you can just come in with your hard polish and run that up to the edge either side just to kind of um, get that sharp again and then just give it a bit of, bit of trim dynamic run that back over that just to get rid of that um, kind of perfect sort of line created by the hard polish so you know just vary the size of your brush and all the rest of it let me just you know, get rid of some of this and uh, another another technique you can use is um, you know you can just uh, let's see if I've got a fresh bit to work on I'm still trying to get used to this I'm trying to transition over to the right click uh, navigation which is so much better but I've been <laughs> using the, the traditional well, right click's been in it for years, but um, I always found it a bit awkward with the Wacom to put my finger on the on the right click. But I definitely have to keep practicing and transition over over to it because it's a much much better navigation system. Um, so yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So say for instance, you know, you can just uh, mask mask a section off. just invert the mask and then with clay tubes you can kind of quite 
aggressively dig in and run up to those corners. Or even clay build up. Clay build up will dig in a lot more um, aggressively. Maybe a bit too aggressively in this case, but uh, I'll just go and do some of that. And um, just go a bit easier with the, with the bit clay build up. I can see here this effect it gives as we get to the edges because of the mask. It's um, just want to take that bit off the mask. You know, because of the mask, we're getting that kind of nice kind of stepping. So I'll clear the mask. You know, it looks like it's kind of a layer. It's there's a bit of a layer, kind of a shell type layer around it here. And then you can come in and sort of just um, mimic kind of with the damn standard. You have to go much smaller, and, you know, more kind of layers inside there, or whatever. This is just sort of. And then um, use the pinch as well, as we were using earlier. You know, it's another uh, method instead of. Um, Using the, the hard polish, but yeah, I like using them. Um, as I say, I like using the hard polish um, on uh, on flat surfaces. Just get to change that back. So you know, get a heavy handed kind of random scribbling. Get that nice uh, eroded kind of look to it. Trend dynamic and so that's kind of the basic all oh, the basic brushes. Um a bit carried away here that yeah that's just sort of the basic brushes that you can use. You can see how effective and, and quite simply or how <laughs> how simple it can be to to start to um mimic those kind of rock like uh, features stone like features um so if we open up a uh, light box comma and you can see these brushes here i'll just show these these are um xmd brushes i can't remember the bloke's name but he's created millions and millions of uh, zebrush brushes and they're all available there he has them on gumroad and they're on zebrush central so uh, just type in xmd zebrush brushes and he's a load of ones here for uh, these kind of stone, rock, earth, cliffs, ground, natural brushes and um, exactly what you might want for it. I think he's, he's an environment artist himself so he's obviously created these for his own personal uh, use and then kindly shared them with the rest of us. Um, so I'll just show some of these. Um, this blob brush here is pretty good. So a lot of them are kind of drag rectangle brushes. So you can see that's a bit uh, oops. It's a bit heavy, a bit heavy hand. Let's drop the intensity down and drag rectangle. So he's loads of these kind of brushes, you know. Um it's just another kind of a weapon in your arsenal. For this kind of environment stuff, he's low, these this is only downloaded I think three sets of the brushes, but he's he's a good few more for all sorts of specific stuff. But there's more than enough brushes here, than, more than you'll ever need probably. Um, so that's the XMD brushes, and then um, there's one more handy brush here for kind of rock and stone work, and that is one of the brushes that ships with uh, Zebrush brush, and that is the where's the trim brushes. Trim, 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 um, trim, smooth border. This is uh, another good um, brush, as I say, for this type of stuff. So let me see if we can get this right click thing going. And just drop my brush size. And you see, this is uh, just a really um, quite aggressive version of, um, of trim dynamic, trim, smooth border. 
so um, this might be you know better used for the larger forms rather than these kind of details here you know you can see um, it works it's a lot more uh, powerful than the regular trim dynamic so that's another handy handy brush you can see the effect it's had there it's just another handy one to add to into the toolbox and uh, you can mess, mess about with them so another feature then I'd like to show that's handy for this type of stuff is um, noise and um, here's this is just a basic noise uh, you can use a noise plugin I could choose some of these ones there's erosion um, and then the granite I, I don't really use these that often maybe select granite and bring the scale up a bit bring it down so you can see here now we're kind of getting a, a granite sort of effect um, and you can mess around with these settings but uh, I'm going to turn off the noise plug with the noise plug active now now in ZBrush we can mix you can see here there's a 50-50 mix so I can come down to the left and that will uh, that will only show the plug-in noise which for whatever reason is behaving crazily and strength is ok oh yeah the scale's gone way too high I'll just bring the strength up on it and the scale down a bit and go the opposite way with the strength and you can see there we get a sort of an eroded kind of a, a rock so let's say for instance we were happy with that um, and now it's on the mesh it's not applied to the mesh yet it's just it's like a temporary kind of a preview you have to apply it to the mesh but depending on your um, poly count um, I'll just show you really quick you see the way they inflate it out kind of and um, it wasn't too bad to give too bad a result but rather than doing that we can control it more by um we could store uh we could store a morph tag and then just mask by noise now that we have that mask you know it's a masking uh, view mask turn that off and now with one of our brushes we can just come in and uh start sculpting and it's going to be masked off by that noise mask so uh, let's see what other brush I'll just just to give you a better example maybe you can see where it's it's coming through mask and I'll just undo that so we just leave the mask on so you can see a bit better the mask is very soft so that's why it's coming through there so you can you can sharpen mask and now you can see it's being blocked by the mask so you can mess around with the uh, uh, blurring and sharpening of the mask depending on what, on what you're after what sort of results you're looking for <sighs> Sorry. And also, um, with our morph target stored here, we can just sculpt and then BM and uh, select our morph brush. And then we can just get rid of that detail again. So it's like just using a mask in Photoshop. Just use our morph brush then to, uh, you know, get rid of that detail again. You can also use this in conjunction with layers. So if you create a layer and store a morph target, and um, you can use both together. 
Um, well, I, I tried to stay away from the lairs. I use them the odd time, but uh, they're a bit annoying. They're kind of buggy. Um, they seem to affect other things, um, upset other things. So I just uh, generally just stay away from them and um, save out different versions of my tool or use morph targets. So that's uh, noise masking. You can also apply this noise to the ma to the mesh if you want to give you a kind of a base, or you could just create a layer, um, apply your noise, and then you can play with the opacity of the layer. And then when you're happy, just bake the layer down and continue on. Um, it gives you a bit bit of bit of non-destructiveness. So uh, that is kind of pretty much it for for the basics of uh, you know sculpting rocks um, stones and things like that uh, basic brushes so I'm going to just leave it at that all this was about was uh, you know showing a few different uh, methods there's not a huge amount for the likes of these they're just paving slabs you know there's not going to be a huge amount of detail in them so there's no point in sitting here for an hour and, and sculpting them all out so what I'm going to do is just uh, I'll pause it here and, and uh, when I come back I'll just have these all sort of you know, sculpted out so here's uh, the finished uh, sculpt of the paving slabs um, I just was just basically using I didn't go crazy on the detail around basically I was just using uh, mostly uh, the brushes I showed earlier on um, clay tubes, clay build up trim dynamic, uh, hard polish and then a couple of those XMD um, uh, alpha kind of brushes just to uh, rough up some of the uh, the edges here where um, where, they, where they've been broken off just bits of chips here and there and a bit of weathering and erosion and, and that sort of thing and uh, worn away edges so basically I just worked on them each as a sub tool divided them up to um, you know two and a half million or something each and then I could just work on them all individually and then when I was finished them all I was soloing them out as I was sculpting and then when I was finished them all they're all pretty much at the same sub div level level four so I just merged them all saved it out first um, and then merged them all down into one um, single sub tool and saved that out again just so I have a copy of both so if we turn on polyframe you can see uh, um, we can auto groups this and uh, into our move tool then you know and we can just uh, control click and just uh, go around and you know move some of them move some of them up and down control click everything else gets masked and then we can just uh, add a bit more variation by moving them up and down but I'm, I'm I'm going to leave it uh, leave them moving up and down till later on because the next part now this is going to be the end of this part this video and um, in the next part I'm going to create uh, this the part underneath it here so I'm going to go back to max and just rough out this shape using the spline then bring it into ZBrush and uh, Dynamesh or Z Remesh it and start sculpting that so that will be uh, the next part of the video um, so as I say once that's done um, and in place then I can uh, I, I can further go in and move these pavers up and down depending on the uh, the landscape kind of below them so uh, that's it for the first part and um, yeah I'll, I'll leave it at that all right cheers thanks good luck